In the meantime, ExxonMobil, the largest oil and gas producer in the United States, met with Wall Street yesterday at the company's annual investor day at the NYSE. Following that, I spoke to Exxon's chief executive, Darren Woods. We hit on a number of topics, things like the company's plans to try and combat global economic slowing because of the coronavirus, and about appealing to younger investors, some of whom are less than excited about fossil fuels. As people hear about what we're trying to do to meet the growing needs of society all around the world, the fact that energy is required to lift people out of poverty and to grow economies, and that oil and gas is an important part of that mix and will be as the world strives to transition to uh, less carbon intensive forms of energy, that we're, we still have a very important role to play. And I think, you know, as young people come to the company, they learn that. Uh, they're proud of the role they have in terms of helping meet the needs of broader society. You've also rolled out your goals in terms of climate change and trying to cut uh, emissions. Um, have you spoken with the Trump administration, which has rolled back some of the regulations that had been in place? I, I think you all were on track to meet many of those regulations and guidelines. Have you yeah. had some talks with them? In our position, we, we have been advocating uh, broadly to keep methane uh, regulations in place. In fact, we just recently put out a framework for methane regulation for policymakers to consider. We think it's an important part of being a responsible operator. And so we've set internal targets within our company to reduce methane emissions by 15 percent, just uh, reduce flaring by 25 percent. And so, you know, our objective as a company is to be the most responsible operator. And we think it's uh, important for the industry to strive to be responsible operators. And Meaning we think you, want level, your, you want your competitors held to the same standard you're well, we think yourselves a, a, to? We think it's reasonable. You know, the government has a role. Regulations have a role. We think it's, that's the right uh, role for them to play. Making sure that they're balanced and they achieve the objective is kind of what we advocate for. Rex Tillerson, your predecessor, former Secretary of State, was uh, speaking recently uh, somewhere in Texas, I should say, and he said something about how he's not sure that humans, what humans can really do to try and combat climate change. Do you agree with that, or would you argue the other side? Well, I think, uh, and, and Rex was working on this uh, when he was at the company, and we continue to work on that. We step back and look at, um, first of all, we're in the, in the business of meeting society's needs. Uh, we recognize that one of the needs is less carbon intensive energy sources and so we look at where today are hydrocarbons used and what are the alternatives available and how um, sufficient is the solution set and we see significant gaps in commercial transportation, power generation and industrial sectors and so we're working on technologies to help close that gap. We're working on carbon capture and storage uh, to use in power generation, to use in industrial applications. We're looking at new materials um, to redesign um, manufacturing processes to take energy and heat out of those, which then reduces the amount of greenhouse gases. We're looking at biofuels, which are energy dense that can replace dent, uh, diesel. So there's a lot of work that we're doing that we think can contribute to that space, but it will require a technology uh, advancement and breakthrough to ultimately get to the stage where we can uh, reach society's aspiration of eliminating CO2 emissions. Can I talk to you just about uh, coronavirus? I, I, I know that Exxon, uh, ExxonMobil, I believe, has the 10th largest travel budget of all the companies that we, we kind of follow out there. Have, have you guys been cutting back on travel as a result of what we're hearing? We have. We, we have actually, uh, because of our long history of operating in a lot of different locations around the world, you think about Ebola, think about SARS, and MERS, these are all things that our corporations had to deal with at different times. And so we have a, a pretty uh, robust protocol in place that we exercise when we find ourselves in a situation like we are now with the coronavirus. We executed that very early on, which means cutting back discretionary travel. It means folks moving into their homes and working remotely. We've, we've geared up our workforce so they can do that effectively, mm -hmm. reduce the number of people coming into our facilities. And so we implemented that very early on. How, how long ago? Oh, when, when it first came out, we, yeah. we set the ESGs up. And then what happens is as we find that coronavirus breaking out in different loca locales, we will stand that ESG system up. We've got about 1,500 employees in China, about 750 in Italy, uh, another 125 or so um, in Korea, South Korea. And so uh, all those protocols have been put in place. And I'm very pleased to say we have not had any employees that have been uh, impacted by the coronavirus. Has it affected your operations at all? hasn't affected the operations. We do. Some of our customers, uh, particularly in China, have pulled back, and so that, that meant less product demand. 
Uh, we have uh, fab yards where we're constructing materials. Those things slow down. So there have been slowdowns, I would say, in some of the work that we're doing, but we're actually seeing that pick back up again. And I, I know you're not a virologist uh, or even an economist for that matter, but your gut feel as a CEO who watches the numbers on a daily basis, what's your best guess about what happens to the global economy? We're expecting to see something where we have a dip, and we'll see that uh, kind of expand around the world. We, we saw the dip initially in China. We're starting to see the rebound. My expectation is in those locales where you see uh, that uh, kind of contagion spread that we'll see that dip, but then we'll see a fairly quick rebound. What, what's at the top of your list of concerns these days? Would it be coronavirus or something else? I think just making sure that our business, uh, first of all, that we stay on top of the, the coronavirus and keep our employees safe, and that's a key consideration. Uh, again, I feel pretty good about the protocols that we have in place. And then it's just making sure that we manage through these short-term turbulence without uh, getting sidetracked or sidetracking this longer-term program we have to invest in the business and build the capacity for earnings and cash flow growth. You'd agree with the idea that there's undervaluation, that things have been undervalued in the oil patch these days? Yeah, I think if you look in the, I, I agree with that. And I also, if you look at some external data, the IEA put something out that shows uh, the industry is not investing at the rate it needs to uh, to meet the demand for energy in the future, irrespective of the scenario uh, that you uh, plan for, whether it's kind of a two degree scenario or a more, a more standard uh, scenario. Again, ExxonMobil has said that they would be investing CapEx of somewhere between 30 and $35 billion over the next several years. Every year annually they'll be doing that. Darren Wood said uh, you can anticipate that it would be at the lower end of that range this time around. The company does have a yield of almost 7%. And in order to pay that dividend uh, with oil prices at these levels, uh, something's probably going to have to give. If oil stays at these levels, it sounded to me like he was saying it would be CapEx that would be kind of held back. And it's interesting when we had Sam Zell yesterday here who said he he thinks um, the energy patch is a great place to be investing. And he said, by the way, everybody else who's already invested in it is in the position where they can't invest a whole lot more because they are underwater on so many things. The problem is when you look back and you look at these companies and like Sam Zell, who is I iconic, the, all these companies make a ton of sense. But, the, but we're in this ESG investing phase where anything with any sort of harmful uh, carbon footprint or any chemicals is being thrown out. And when you look at the 7 percent yield, the stock's down 28% year to date. Right. And everything in the energy complex has been underperforming, not for this year, but for the last five years.